everybody, Jacqueline Metcalf here. And as you can see, we have Chris Wolf. Chris Wolf is our guest today, and Grant will be joining us at some point. We're live on location at uh, Bear's Place, where I have been sipping on a hairy bear. And what, what are you drinking? Um, these are called Bear's something. And so we, it's a beer. It's a beer. And bears beer. <laughs> so we are actually um, we're going to change things up from our normal thing, and you're going to tell us about a song and yes. jump right into a song first. I'm going to sing a song first. This is a song I wrote because my wife was a kindergarten teacher for 23 years. 23 years. 23 wow. years. She's got some balls there. I'm telling you, and <laughs> and um, for the last 10 years, she's been a nanny. A nanny. Her two little two girls. Two thumbs up to his wife, dude. Two little girls um, on on the north side, a real nice family, and she's been raising, helping raise them. It's for ten years. And she said, "Chris Wolf," she calls me Chris Wolf. Okay. Chris Wolf, you write all these songs, and you've never written a children's song. Why not? And I didn't have an answer, so I wrote this children's song for her. For I'm, not, of that. I'm not sure if she's was looking for this. Oh. <laughs> Gather round me, children. I got tail to tail. Gather round me closely so you can hear me well. You only get one childhood. Enjoy it while you can. And try to stay away from the man in the windowless van. Now he might have a puppy great big candy bar he might offer you a ride so you don't have to walk too far he might say he's a dear old friend of your mom and dad you might think he's a real nice guy but he's not he's bad he's the bad bad man in the windowless van hanging out at the park better beware if you can't especially after dark you can be nice to everyone you meet. I really think you should. But the bad, bad man in the windowless van, he's up to no good. Sing along with the mouse of all, boys and girls. <laughs> now, I'm not trying to scare you. Not trying to cause alarm. I'm just looking out for you, trying to keep you away from harm. Better safe than sorry. Just never know, but it looks like everything's okay. Let's get my van and go. <laughs> There's a bad, bad man in a windowless van hanging out at the park. You better beware if you can, especially after dark. You can be nice to everyone you meet. I really think you should. But the bad, bad man in the windowless van, he's up to no good. Bad, bad man in the windowless van he's up to no good anybody need a ride home <laughs> <laughs> i like that that's good thank you that wasn't what my wife was looking for <laughs> i don't think that was what she was looking for uh, i think it's a public it. service announcement it don't you yeah, i agree stay away from that man in the windowless van children unless you're looking for a good time no that's right <laughs> just so you know we are we actually children can't watch our show unless you bad parents out there have put it on for them so we start Every episode, normally not with a song, but that was that was a good one for Thank today. Thank you for letting me do that. That yeah, was awesome. We're going to have more of that coming up. But we always start with three random questions that you selected before, and then you can decide whether or not you want to Well, I didn't select. I mean, yes, I blind you. You randomly selected them. Yes. So why don't we, you get to read them out loud for everybody, and then you can answer them or tell us if you're passing on them. Oh, okay. Yes, and I get to pass on one, you, you can, But you have to answer the other two if you pass okay. on one. If you have, if you could have the power to hypnotize anyone for a day, who would you pick, pick and what would you have them do? Ooh, I'm curious. Well, my wife might be watching, so I'm not going to say Uma Thurman. <laughs> but if she wasn't watching, I'd probably pick her. 
Um, I would pick Tom Waits. He's like my favorite songwriter and I would like make him hang out with me and write songs and, sm and drink whiskey. Maybe smoke some pot. And maybe smoke some weed. Yep, there you Tom go. Tom Waits, yeah. All right. Go to the next one. Yeah. If you had to give up your favorite food forever, what is the minimum amount of money you would demand in return? Ooh. Bacon. What? Five million dollars. Five million dollars would be enough to get rid of bacon. I would get rid of bacon because there's bacos. I That's wonder if that qualifies for like imitation bacon. Hmm? It's imitation. It's not really bacon. All and right. I have five million bucks. What are you going to do, sue me? <laughs> <laughs> so you might have a good point. See, I don't know that, like, mine's ice cream. I don't know that there's ice enough cream? money to ever make me want to give up ice cream. Well, I guess I can, like, cheat and go to frozen yogurt. Yeah, there you go. See? <laughs> loopholes. Loopholes. Like we'll run with the loopholes. <laughs> W.C. Fields was in the hospital on his last days, mm -hmm. and his assistant walked in, and, and W.C. Fields was reading the Bible, mm -hmm. and he goes, what are you doing? You've never been a man of religion. He goes, I'm looking for loopholes. <laughs> That's a good one, actually. So we got one more question here. Oh, one more. Okay. If you had to choose the one thing that gives you the most comfort, what would you say it is? Um, well, it's not going to be very funny or very interesting, but mm -hmm. solitude. 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 Some time with just me my guitar, my, my pad, writing, thinking, just, I mean, I love my wife very much. Mm -hmm. I think she <laughs> Until loves after the show. <laughs> I think she loves me. Either she loves me or she's like the world's worst gold digger. Oh yeah. Well, that would totally be a bad thing, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, I mean, this, um, she's a nanny. So sometimes she has to like stay for a couple of days with the family. Okay. And, that gives me so much comfort to just be with my own thoughts, with my my notepad, my guitar, writing songs, writing jokes. Mm -hmm. That gives so basically, me you're most... telling everybody that you're just the happiest when your wife's not around. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, honey, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's he's calling in some of those brownie points he's earned for later. So those were those were our random questions. Did I answer all three of them? You did. Oh, I wow. would you would pass on the one, but we talked about the music and stuff before we yeah. went live. Which well, was, there was there was a question on the other side that said yeah, if, it's, they're if, double sided. Yeah, I, and I and one of them I just flipped that over right away. It said <laughs> if you could pick a past vice president to become president, who would you pick? I don't do politics. Yeah, me either. I mean, I do, but I don't. I, I don't, don't discuss them. It's ugh. I listen to everybody else bitch about it. That's exactly right. <laughs> I enjoy I enjoy that. So hey, we should do it like a toast. Let's toast. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers to the Rumble Renegade. Damn, well, thank you. So this is not your first time hanging out with at least me. And you hung out with Elle. Mm -hmm. You you uh you graced our presence back in last month when we were at the village pub. At the village pub. I, He's stalking me. <laughs> See, now we know why he wants his wife gone. And he brought the van with no windows. See? I know what's up. I used to have a windowless van. And I did. And I, and the irony I, when, of that. I, I was in construction, and I would pick my kids up from, like, baseball practice or whatever, and they, I'd pull up, and they'd go. And I'd slide the, the side door <laughs> open. And, and they'd go, Dad. Why'd you bring the molester van? <laughs> oh, that's that's epic. The, out of the mouth, you know, out yeah. of the mouth's face. Let me tell you, they're great though. You come up with all kinds of stuff. So you don't do you do you have children? You don't have children. I do. You do, I, have, I, you do have children. I have two boys, and my wife has a boy, but we say boys because they're all grown men. I'm an old guy. Um, my wife's son is thirty eight, mm -hmm. and we have two granddaughters with him, mm -hmm. and his wife. Um, Nate and Steph, and then I have two boys that are mine um, that I had with my late wife, mm -hmm. and um, one of them is 29 and lives in um, Buena Vista, Colorado, mm -hmm. um, and he's a hippie. Is he single? He is single. I'm single. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I am. But <laughs> is he good looking? <laughs> Can he sing? Sorry. I think he's, I, I, I think he's very attractive male. <laughs> yes. yes, Patrick, you're correct. This drink is huge. It's it's Kool Aid. It's called the Harry Bear. It's all Kool Aid. No. 
no, <laughs> that is not true. That, that when they, when I went to get a second drink for, for her, she, the waitress said, okay, this is the first one. <laughs> yeah, this is the other one. She said, the waitress said, she finished that already. <laughs> Great. Now everybody's going to think I'm a drunk. <laughs> it's, it's Kool-Aid people. Come on, look, it looks pink. <laughs> It's, so, it's, it's fruit punch. It's fruit punch. Yeah. All right. You're right. It's not too late. It's fruit punch. Anyway. Um, oh, and then I have another son that's in uh, Brooklyn, New York, uh -huh. and he's, he's married and he uh, owns, he owns two bicycle shops in okay. Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. He owns um, the both in Williamsburg, which is like the hipster part of town. Mm -hmm. um, one of them is called King Cog, like King mm -hmm. Kong, but yeah. <laughs> Cog in a wheel. And the other one's called Sun and Air. Okay. Um, it's after a Smith song, Son and Heir. You know, I'm the son and heir of your estate, but, mm -hmm. but they, they call it Son and Heir, like the son. For all the blondes out there. Son and the heir. <laughs> and and um, his wife kind of runs that one. It has a coffee shop. It's real cool. Bicycles and coffee. Yeah. You got to have that caffeine to hit the bike. And we have a brand new uh, grandson that's four weeks old. Yeah. Oh, you didn't have him. No, he was he just four? No, you hadn't had him yet. Four weeks, four, four weeks ago, we had him. Okay. I, I didn't have him. Well, my, no, my daughter you can't take credit for that. <laughs> I know people can say, congratulations. I'm like, I, I didn't, didn't do anything. anything. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. So how long have you been married? Um, well, it's 13 years. It'll be 14 in October. Okay. Um, I hope I did the math right. I'm looking boy, to see. oh boy, he's totally going to need the shovel to go home with him. <laughs> Hey, um, I got a couch he can crash on. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, yeah, and um, but we've known each other since 1985. Wow, that's uh, a long time. Yeah. So what would be your advice for like a nice, long, happy marriage from a man's standpoint of view? <laughs> um, well, I don't know. Find somebody that that um, that works with you because, I mean, my, my first marriage um, was 20 or 18 years and we were together for five before that. So okay, 23 so years total, right. I was with her. Um, unfortunately, she passed away from cancer. Mm, sorry. And, yeah, and, um, and so um, uh, my, my wife, Diane, who I love dearly, she's, she was a friend of ours and it just worked out that way and we ended up getting married and that was some um, 13 years ago. And I don't know, I, I just, we were a good match. I mean, I mean, either you have it or you don't. Sure. And sometimes people don't figure it out for a while, but, mm -hmm. but I, I, I don't know. It just so worked. What shouldn't you do if you want to stay married? Yeah, argue. <laughs> <laughs> argue. I was going to roll happy with life. that cheap, that, wait, say, no, happy say. Happy wife, happy life. That is so, <laughs> now I want to cheers to cheers. that one. That's what my husband, when he was alive, used to say. Whatever mama wants, mama gets. That's if right. Mama ain't happy, ain't nobody. Nobody's happy. happy. That's right. And all you single men out there, that's how you have a happy marriage. That's right. And any, I know we have, um, like Betty is, uh, she's been married a very long time. And so I bet her, her husband says that a lot. So you guys obviously are more than welcome to jump in at any time to ask questions, but I want more music. Oh yeah. You got any more? Did oh you bring sure. Anymore? I have plenty. You got something funny? I do. Sure. Let's, let's roll one out. <clears throat> we're, we're, I'm, I'm taking advantage of this because I don't ever get my own personal, you know, serenade very often. This song, um, my, when my youngest son, his name's Damon. Um, when he was living in Indiana, he said, Pops, I only got like two grand and I need a car. Can you get on? Can you help me find a car? So we got on Craigslist and we got him a complete piece of shit. <laughs> For $2,000? Yeah. Oh, that's terrible. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> I knew it, buddy. So, um, so yeah, we got him a complete piece of shit. It was a '96 two-door Blazer. But um, I got a cool song out of the deal. Hey, at least you got something out of it. it only cost you two grand. They say she likes a four-wheel drive. She likes an SUV. She's crazy about a muscle car, classic Model T. 
She even likes a limousine, but none of that's for me. I just need a way to get from point A to point B. Love my car. It's beater with a heater. It goes pretty far, but it's a real gas eater. She don't like what I drive, but I don't want to meet her. Love my car. It's a beater with a heater. I might have to change a tire or glue the mirror back on. Radio, it always works, but stations might be gone. Sometimes I gotta smack the dash when I turn on the lights. Sometimes I roll down the window and drive around all night. Love my car, it's beater with a heater. It don't go fast, but I never was a speeder. She don't like what I drive, but I don't want to meet her. Love my car, it's a beater with a beater. I'm going to take this thing around the block now, Jackie. Van, you're fast and furious. You can keep that big sedan that's so luxurious. I don't want no hybrid car or monster pickup truck. Hell, I tore out the back seat so it got a place to sleep. <laughs> oh, my car, it's Peter with a heater. It's got four doors, but it's only a two seater. She don't like what I drive, but I don't want a meter. Love my car, it's a beater with a heater. Love my car, it's a beater with a heater. Anybody got jumper cables? <laughs> Seriously, I could get the jump after this gig. <laughs> yeah, I got you. I like that one. That was good. It's a so, true story. Yeah, it only cost you $2,000. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Although you got, probably got some scrap metal left. I think he sold it for six, 600 bucks. Mm. Like six months later. I'm sorry, Damon. I'm sorry, bud. <laughs> Why Craigslist? <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, terrible. I know. Have you, I mean, you could buy all kinds of non existent things on Craigslist. At least you've got a car. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you could have just bought air. That, and, oh, it's just like, well, you know, that one story about the, uh, the naked prince, you know. If you don't, don't know believe, that story. You've never heard that story. No. It's about it. He won. He sent out for like the most. He was a really rich, and he paid all this money for this amazing cloth, and only people. It was nothing. It was literally nothing. So he was walking around naked, and nobody wanted to tell him because if you didn't see it, then that meant you weren't good enough. So he wouldn't admit that there wasn't anything there. But he just got taken for a ride. <laughs> naked. There's an old story about the, the, the king that had no clothes. Back when I was a yeah, kid, yeah. Yeah, that one. It's like yeah, talking about same that. thing. Yeah, it's the exact same. I I don't remember the. Okay, I'm terrible at telling children's <laughs> stories, which is. I'm not, not. I have children's stories. You do. Look, somebody as someone in a '99 Cavalier with three doors that open well and one that is at least there. I feel that song. Emotional emotional level. Levi, that's great. Thank you, Levi. <laughs> you know what? I, speaking of beaters, I used to have a Cavalier. Same thing. Like this thing was so bad. I bought it for like two hundred bucks off a dealership. It was somebody's trade in. It smelled like somebody had been killed in it. Ooh. I mean, I you. It was. I could never figure it, it out. Smelled like somebody had been killed in it, or somebody died in it. Or died. Okay. Died. Because I wonder what it smells like to have oh, somebody killed. Oh my god! Killed. It was so bad. I, okay, died. Let's be <laughs> precise. And the like back shock was all loose, so I had like a coat hanger running through the trunk, holding the. Shock. Oh no. 
<laughs> and no heat. You live in northern Indiana in the middle of winter. You have, need a heater. You, you need, need a, a beater heater. with a heater. I, I would get to work. I'd have to drive like 45 minutes to work. And my, I would be froze. It was, oh, I hated it. I, You know, back in your early 20s. Uh, you, I know. Come on. I know I, you've oh, got a hoopty story. I had, no, I had hoopties all my life. All of your life. Yeah, I know. Now, I got to give you a jump after the show. I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're live. <laughs> <laughs> we are awesome. We actually have the amazing um, staff here at Bears. Hey, why don't you like just yell from over there or pop your head in and tell us what the specials are so people know. It's, Any specials? It's um, Comedy Open Mic Night tonight here right. at Bears. Free Bears show. Place on Free 3rd show. Avenue. We have um, $6 pitchers. $6, $6 pitchers. pitchers. Domestic. And $3 Jameson shots. Oh, $3 Jameson, Jameson shots. Oh, you guys got to come on out. out. We'll, we'll have a couple of those Jameson shots. And Comedy Open Mic starts at 8. Yep. Sign up at 730. You usually puts a list out. Who hosts? Picks. Who hosts? Who hosts? Grant does. And oh, Grant, Grant. Okay. Grant got stuck in the rain and the, um, the uh, traffic. So he got tied up, which was why we're late. And he's still not here. He said that it was going to put him here about a quarter to six. Okay. Six o'clock. So he's just gonna pop his little happy rear end in when he gets here. So we hope he's safe and he didn't hydroplane anywhere. Yes. Did know. you hydroplane? I did. You I drive did this not. little tiny car. Little, yeah, a little. It's a little Honda Fit. I saw that. Yeah. I wanted to play bumper cars. I seen him and I actually had to go around <laughs> him. Like I was in all the way on the. I was all the way on the right. He's right in here the yeah. in the middle. There's a guy slow truck here, and I just went. You're on behind him and around. Yeah. And I saw the, as I, as I, as you flew by, I saw the rumble <laughs> renegade magnet on the door. I was like, I know her. I'm following her. <laughs> but then you went straight when I turned and I'm like, you, I did. I, I, I always go down to third and just come across. Oh, well this, the road 17th, I, on, I know that's supposed just to be easier. It drops me right here in the parking lot. Easy, easy. That's how easy. I leave. It's weird, isn't it? That's how That's I go how home. You leave. Yeah, oh, I I straight across. Yeah. See, and I end up going in through downtown because I like to check out the guys, but it doesn't really work in the summertime because all the college kids are gone. Yeah, they're gone. I, yeah. Yeah, no yeah. eye candy out there right now. So, <clears throat> favorite sex position. <laughs> See, I figured we just really like nail that confidence. So when you go home, you're really going to have to over some back roads. <laughs> um, Whatever she wants. Re reverse cowgirl, of course. <laughs> I didn't actually think you would answer that. <laughs> well, there you go. We know what. <laughs> All right. So you've not been doing that. <laughs> I embarrassed Jackie. Are you kidding me? I know, right? The person who literally carries a butt plug in her car with a tail stuck to it. No, no, make it fun of Lucy. Lucy's awesome. And yes, I know. It's, it's not, it is not normal. Anyway, so. Um, we were talking about you are entering comedy. You're fairly new to the scene. I am very new to the scene. Yes. You've been in music most of your life. Yeah, I've, I've been in the music scene off and on since the mid 80s, early 80s, actually. Yeah. So what made you just do about face and go, hey, I think I'm funny. Honestly, I here's how it all went down. I've known Jerry Goble for a few years. We love Jerry. Yes. And I met Jerry actually through my brother, my younger brother who was in the worship band on Wednesday nights at the service at the church of church, church of cannabis. cannabis. He was, he was in the Wednesday worship band. My brother is a badass bass player. He used to be in a, a band in the nineties. That was huge called Birdmen of Alcatraz. Okay. And, um, he is in several projects. Now he is one of the, uh, everybody out there in Indy that's a bass player probably knows my brother. Um, I play music shows and people will come up after the show and go, Chris Wolf, are you related to Steve Wolf? <laughs> yeah. And so, so anyway, that's how I met Jerry was through my brother. So um, uh, there was actually several encounters I had with him non-professionally. And then one day I saw on Facebook, he announced he was doing a comedy class. Okay. Right, right, right. And um, I do a lot of comedy songs. But I thought, you know, I could use a little um, punching up in the banter between songs because right, I've been telling right, right. the same jokes between songs mm -hmm. for 20 years. And so I signed up 
And the first day I met Jerry, was, the first class was at Taps and Dolls. Okay. Right. On a Saturday afternoon, and and I and he met me at the door, and I was like, "How are you doing, Jerry?" And he goes, "He goes, um, welcome. I'm glad you signed up." And I said, "I'm not here to be a comedian. <laughs> I'm here to learn to write jokes between my songs." Right, right, right. He goes, "I got a system. It's perfect. You'll love it. You'll even get help with your lyrics on this." And I'm like, "Okay, cool, right." We get in the class and he goes, oh, by the way, our last class is a graduation show at Jokers on a Thursday night. Yep. <laughs> and I was like, no, this ain't happening. Right. <laughs> I'm not a comedian. And so I told him after the class, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm, I'll do the class, but I don't know about this graduation show. And so fast forward to the third class was mm -hmm. at Jokers okay. in the showroom. Okay. And he got us all up on stage mm -hmm. one at a time. And he does this um, yep, index card thing. Mm -hmm. And he goes, reads. And, and um, I already had tons of, of like one-liners I'd written over the years that I just record in a book every time I would think of it. Mm -hmm. And so I wrote some out on a card and I did it. And there was some amazing comedians in my class. And they were laughing. And my jokes. Well, there you go. And I got down off that stage and said, fuck, yeah, I can do this. <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, so I've been hitting some open mics and and um, and Brad has been kind enough. Brad, 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 yes. Rig Brad, Brad Riggler yep. stand has been up kind Riggler. enough to, yes, yeah, stand up Riggler. He's been kind enough to put me on a couple of his shows and, and I've got the fever and I'm learning. <laughs> I'm learning how to do things, but it's a lot of fun. Look, there's my wife. I, I know she she has no idea that you <laughs> you're catching in brownie points later. Hello, Diane. Thanks for Hi, Di. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got hearts and stuff coming. Wow, up. there's some mad love there. <laughs> I do love do, her. Do very I need much. to like just give the room to you guys? <laughs> <laughs> she gonna turn on the video next thing you know. This is gonna be a whole different podcast. This will be a different show. Yes, it will be. <laughs> They would be subscribing this to Pornhub. I get, I get 60%. It's my idea. Just saying. <laughs> so <clears throat> you did the, you did the showcase. Yeah. So when you did the showcase, did you just do jokes or do you um, do music and jokes? Well, actually, um, so, so um, there were only five of us in the class. Um, so let's say five. No, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. There were five of us. And, um, and so Jerry said, you got 10 minutes. And I was like, oh, shit, <laughs> 10 minutes. You, but do you know, I, 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 I know Liz, you're trying to thought, but just curious, since you've been doing this a little while now, have you noticed that like, if somebody tells you 10 minutes, you're like, ah, really only 10 minutes? No. Really? 10 no. minutes still seems long to you. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Because I'm a one-liner guy, you know? Okay. Fair and enough. So, so the, the, the challenge of, of doing one-liners is. A, remember it at all of them because there's no tie-in you know you right, tell right, one right. joke and the next Fair one enough. one's about a dog and the next one's about your sink and it doesn't make any continuity but the the other thing is is um 10 minutes is an eternity for a guy that's never done this before that is true um when when i play music shows I, and i've been playing uh, music gigs for years you know i'll tell my jokes between songs and they're mostly corny you know they're dad jokes that's cool but if nobody laughs, it's okay. Cause I'm going to do a song, you know, right. that's not why you're here. I always tell in my music shows, when I tell jokes and they bomb, I always go, the comedy's a bonus folks. <laughs> They're paying me to play music. This See, is all for you. <laughs> I totally get that. I totally get that. And so this um, is Chris Wolf. Yes. And yes, I'm Chris Wolf. He's Chris Wolf. He's Chris a, Wolf. He, everybody yeah. knows who Chris Wolf is. No, they actually don't. Here, they don't. Uh, do you have a sticker? Do I, have I have a give sticker. you a sticker? See. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on. I'm gonna put a sticker on here. Give me an extra one for later. It's gonna be backwards, I think, on there. Maybe not. No. There it is. Never heard of me. I, I, <laughs> hold on, so, hold on. See, so check this out. See, there you go. I don't want to cover up the fighting Irish, which no, I just that. want to point out. I'm going to play on the, I am literally in Bloomington right now. Right, I am right. central <laughs> wearing a Notre Dame shirt. I just thought that was funny. <laughs> He's James is a newbie. Well, James, you can be a newbie. We're, we're happy to have newbies. <clears throat> so 
<laughs> his look, he said his second time out, 10 minutes. I feel you, brother. That's a long time for me. Yeah. I, I, I'm where I'm supporting Carrie Ray. Carrie Ray. Who's Carrie Ray? Carrie Ray. She's a friend of mine that has a band called Carrie Ray and the Shaky Legs. It's her. Hello, Carrie. If Carrie, you happen to tune and, in. And now, remember, we do ask questions. We, we, look, oh, you shared a stage once. With who? Me and James. Or are you and Levi? You, or, who who did you share a stage with? You, you or gotta with keep Jackie? Up my yeah, come on, James. Yeah, come on. You gotta be. I'm more on the specific. edge of my seat now. Or or was it like some kind of like live sex show act? <laughs> <laughs> that would have been him. No, not me, not me. <laughs> there might have been a jackass on stage, but it wasn't me. <laughs> okay. You're not going to believe this, but Carrie and I were friends in high school. Yes. Oh, well, so there you know, you know Carrie. we got some Carrie friends. And that was in Rockville, probably. She lives in Nashville now. Does she? Yeah, but uh, Nashville, Indiana. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, Nashville, when you Indiana. say Nashville, I'm thinking Nashville, Tennessee. <laughs> but she tours everywhere, and she's a dear friend of mine. Actually, I'm uh, filling in for her. She has a songwriter showcase at Chateau Thomas Winery in oh. Nashville, Indiana. Oh, nice. And she'll be on the road, so I'll be hosting... And uh, two other great songwriters. I'm, I can't tell you who they are right now because I have no idea. But <laughs> they're so great, he doesn't even know who they are yet. Well, Carrie books that secret. show. Carrie books the show. And Gotta she, tune in. Um, I think it might be. A, <clears throat> I'm not going to guess. But well, yeah, tell her hook me up with some wine while she's at it. What's that? Tell her hook me up with some wine. They've got a new ice wine. The, actually, um, Chateau Thomas just got bought, and now it's called Country. Heritage wines or something. As long as they keep the ice wine, but I don't care what they call it. They, Just yeah, give me they, the ice they wine. have ice wine. Yes, Rockville. See. Oh, we shared the stage at Tolly's one night. Nice. Oh, I love Tolly's. I I I love Carrie Ray and her partner Dion. They're... Oh, but Carrie's awesome. He shared the stage with me, but Carrie's awesome. <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> mm, no, I'm playing. <laughs> but. Tolly's is really good. If you ever get a chance, they have an open mic on Friday nights. You know, you do a lot of music, but their comedy open mics are really freaking awesome. Well, where's Tolly's? I don't. It's in Terre Haute, but it's oh, Terre Haute. so okay. worth the drive. They have a, a, the bar there is really cool. They've always they do a karaoke right after. And I apologize to anybody who has sat through my karaoke because we've talked about this. <laughs> this is the reason I do comedy. I can't sing. <laughs> but they get that crowd in there right before that all want to do karaoke. So you always have like. 90% of the time, actual people in there to like just mess around with. And it's great. One, yeah, yeah. one night I was out there, I thought for sure, I had this one chick laughing so hard, I thought she was going to pee herself. I love it. Uh, it's yeah. like, man, I'm going to start carrying around, you know, diaper, you know, pet pads or something. <laughs> it's, Please sit down. Have set a up a merch table. Right. Set up, set I up even, pins. I, yes. With my name on. No. <laughs> no. I don't want anybody pissing well, they have on those, me. They have those pretty pins now. Have you seen them? They're like they're like lacy and stuff, and they're real slim and interesting. Yeah, this man talks like he sounds like he's talking from experience. <laughs> no, I saw the commercial. Sure. Hey, That's when they're advertising women's panties on on TV, I watch. I'm not gonna ignore that. <laughs> well, I, I was told to let you know that the host of Tolly's is sexy as hell, but he's married. Levi, yeah. so I don't know how well that's going to do. Who's the host? Levi. <laughs> Who's the host, Levi? What? what? He is. <laughs> <laughs> he is? Oh, okay. Oh, he was, he actually was on the show. Um, a Look, couple, Jacob Rubel's in the yeah, house. Hey, Jacob. Um, What's he, up? He was on the show last week. Oh, was he? Or, no, the week before last. Was it last week or the week before? How terrible is it? Everything just, but he wore He'll a tell coconut. Us. He'll tell he us. He wore a coconut bra. It was perfect. <laughs> that was the week before because we had Kristen Carnes on last week. But yeah, he, it was fun. It was good times. That's when we Lego had uh, Al, <laughs> which was kind of funny. I'm sorry you missed that. I, I didn't wear my coconut bra. Well, if I'd known, dude, if you, yeah. I have a black one and a pink one. <laughs> Okay, I'll wear the black one. You wear the pink one. We're gonna have you on. She, he's gonna. He is actually going to be in the future coming as a guest host, that and we're gonna fun. wear coconut bras. That'd be fun. <laughs> it will be. I don't have a grass skirt. Do you have a grass skirt? No, I don't have a grass skirt. We're gonna find some grass skirts because I mean, if we're gonna do it, you'll be working on a new song called the the Rumble Hula. <laughs> you all right over there? I'm good. <laughs> so again, you guys. 
you have been really quiet. Ask your questions. Or do we want to hear another? Sorry, I'm cool with making him like play music because I can sit here and chill and drink. So do you, what's your favorite song? Funny song that you have. Oh, of mine? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, right now, um, it has to be my song. I call it Physical Exam. That's probably my favorite, but that's one of my newer ones, yeah. Are we like talking like physical OBGYN type exam or are we talking like, uh, let's check quite. your blood pressure not kind quite. of exam? Not quite. No. Let me put it this way. I thought about calling it physical exam and then in parentheses, like the stars do, they put parentheses and put another title in there. Oh, okay. I was going to call it physical exam. So it's trying to be pretentious. All yes. right. <laughs> and the parentheses, it would say digital exam. A digital exam. The, the finger scares me, dude. I'm not even going to lie. When you do this, I'm going, oh, shit, I need to let yeah. go. Are you afraid of my digit? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I am so sorry to your wife. <clears throat> he's, I have he's embarrassed, I have he's embarrassed just, Jackie Medcap twice believe, on this podcast. Can you believe that? And I am not easy to embarrass. I mean, come on, I talk about blowjobs and... Here, we're gonna we're gonna do this. There you go. <laughs> if you don't know who Chris Wolf is, you're about to find out. <laughs> so, do you have? To, are you willing to sing the digital? Yeah, digital? sure, I will. Because I'm I'm it. now curious, but I, I almost think I should be going like. No, no, it's not about you. Yay! See, I'm. You're a young girl. I am over fifty. I'm well, young. He's right. I'm totally young. I believe I was. Someone said I was 25. I'm rolling with that. See, you you are a young, a young woman. I shouldn't say girl. You're a young woman, and I'm an old man. But I took a shower, so I'm not dirty. <laughs> but this is what um, you know. I just want to point out that dirty is a matter of perspective. That's right. Yeah. This is a song about um, a man in his 50s and. If you're not in your 50s yet, this is what you got to look forward to. Oh, this is great. I'm getting older, more concerned about my health. Just like they say, it's more important than your wealth. <laughs> I'm in my 50s, time to be a man. I call the doctor for a physical exam. He checked my nose, he looked inside my ears, asked if I smoked or if I drank a lot of beers. He checked my lungs and he listened to my heart. It's going great, but then it all fell apart. He stuck his finger in my butt. Raise her up, boy, and I'll tell you what, <laughs> I would have bet, I wouldn't let some guy stick his finger in my butt. <laughs> and I gotta tell you, it came as a surprise. It took my breath away and bugged out my eyes. It didn't hurt that much. I'm not really sore. I just assumed I might resist a little more. <laughs> when he stuck that finger in my butt, he greased her up, boy. And I'll tell you what, I would have bet, I would let some guy stick his finger in my butt. Today's modern medicine can cause my thoughts to linger. All this technology, and they still just use their finger. <laughs> but I'm not mad, and I will never shed a tear. It's kind of sad I gotta <laughs> wait another year. He'll stick his finger in my butt. He'll grease her 
freezer. Oh, boy. And I'll tell you what, I would have bet, I wouldn't let some guy stick his finger in my butt. Here we go. This is that bum. What? <laughs> <laughs> I know we had two backup dancers. Right? What are you more of a? Are you more of a? <laughs> no, 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 no. That would be terrible. Uh, my doctor, my doctor clever. told me when he was getting ready to do that, I was like, oh, and he goes, "Hey, there's no happy end of the finger here." That's what he told me. <laughs> I Look at my he... wife; she's like, "Oh my." <laughs> Well, does she at least take a, were you partaking in the visual simulation of this? <laughs> <laughs> well, she, James my, seems to think fingers in the butter are awesome. <laughs> Thank you for sharing. Hey, you know, everybody's got their thing. That, you're right. We are not kink shaming here. That's right. So you have some shows coming up. You, you want to plug them? I do have some shows coming up. That mm. was a party foul, dude. Just a little spot. It's, I'm just like marking if, my space. I, I was going to say, if you could see this, it kind of looks like he went. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, let's see. So um, August 2nd, which is a Friday night, I will be at. It used to be Chateau Thomas Winery in Nashville, Indiana. Now it's okay. called Country Heritage Winery. Country Heritage and I'll Winery? Be, I will be um, nice. host. I'll be hosting a songwriters round with two other terrific songwriters. Time. Uh, it'll be from seven to ten. Okay. Um, it's free. Bring your fingers. Let's bring your fingers. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, let's see. Wednesday the fourteenth. I'm at the Plainfield Farmers Market <laughs> from four thirty to six thirty, and I will not be doing that song. <laughs> <laughs> and He's then chicken shit. <laughs> <laughs> No, because I have two more shows there, and I don't want to ruin that. Oh, right, right. <laughs> that paying, would be a shame paying, time. They're, they're paying cash. Uh -huh. And then um, August 16th in Fountain Square. Uh, it's a Friday night, All August right. 16th, on the on the plaza there in Fountain Square, an outdoor 50th anniversary of Woodstock tribute show. And I am... Bring your doobies. No, don't uh, really yeah, do that. Sure, bring them. I don't care. Bring your vapes. Those are easier to get away with. Right, right, right. And um, I am actually co-hosting as the MC, mm. and I'm uh, playing the part of Arlo Guthrie. Okay. So I'll be doing Arlo Guthrie songs that night. And then, um, oh, um, August 9th, my wife and I are going to go see Santana. Oh, Carlos Santana yeah. is coming in town. I want to take my son to see him. Yeah, we're going you know, to that. I'm going to get some tickets for that unless some gorgeous guy wants to, I don't know, date me and then he can buy the tickets and I'm going <laughs> to like, there you go. I need three though because I got to take my son. Hook her up. Um, no yeah. comedians, please. <laughs> uh, yeah, no comedians. I only want to be the funny one in the group, just saying. <laughs> yeah, and then that's it. That's in August. That's all I've got right now except um, August 27th. We're going to see Mark Knopfler, my wife and I. Oh, there from, you go. Uh, dire Straits, yeah. So, so if I don't see it at one of my shows, go to Santana or Mark Knopfler. There's like a nice little comment here. Would you like to read that? Right here from Levi. I almost had that happen at an appointment about four weeks ago. I was like, nah, I'm 26. I swear it's an ear, <laughs> ear infection. <laughs> <laughs> Ma'am, I when when he when he did the prostate exam, I don't understand. He had he had a hand on each of my shoulders. <laughs> Light bulb just came on. <laughs> it was a nurse, maybe. <laughs> his assistant, his and very then, small midget assistant. And then when, when he, he left the room, the nurse came in and I said. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I, when the nurse came in, I, I was like, well, that doctor was kind of weird. And she said, what doctor? He hasn't been in here yet. <laughs> <laughs> he must have, did you look outside to see if there were any little adult molester bands out there? <laughs> there was a windowless man in the parking lot, now that you mention it. I never made the connection. The mystery has been solved. 
I'm thinking Scooby Doo, and I would have gotten away with it. It wasn't for those kids. The mystery man. I swear to God, I have not done anything to him. As much as people would like to like think that I did anything, nope. Mm -mm, that's all his fucked up crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm really surprised. Lots of people have their own little stories, but nobody has any questions today. So yeah. tell me, tell me something. Do you have like some absurd time that you had on stage? Because I'm, I'm running out of faith that Grant's going to make it here in time. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think Grant's going to make it. What time is it? We're going to have to like roast yeah. him or something later. We're, we're going to write a song. Maybe. Let's, let's get together. Let's write a, write a song about, about Grant. We're going to write a song about Grant. We'll call it That's Lame. <laughs> Okay, so Grant, when you tune in, you know it's, you got be, a song coming your way. It'll buddy. be called "We Drove in the Same Traffic, Dude." That's lame. That'll be the title. Mm -hmm. With pretty fingernails, <laughs> actually, might need to be redone. But yeah, he does. He has some pretty awesome fingernails, dude. It's always like dude. a work of art. Grant, Grant has noticed? great fingernails. I've never yeah. noticed. He paints them each a different color. I've never noticed that. I've How known, did you not know? I've that? I've known Grant for like two years now. Well, he's really? usually in the sound booth when I see him. Well, and it's probably so, hard. What is when hard? you're used to your fingers being <laughs> behind you? <laughs> Just pointing out the obvious. Do you have, have a, a, writing, a writing, writing schedule? schedule? Oh, that's a good question. Me? Yeah, you. No, I I really don't. Um, um, the 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 truth is 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 um, I have these one liners pop in my head, and I used to just post them on Facebook. Okay. And then I would forget about them. And okay. my wife was like, dude, write these down. Okay. And I was like, ah, what for? Mm -hmm. And and then they start popping up in my Facebook memories. Okay. You know, and I was like, yep. oh, I, I forgot I said memories. that, you know. Like like the other day, one popped in my head. I said, uh, most conversations with my dentist are one-sided. <laughs> yeah, I saw that yeah. post. I, it was like. It was just like a weird thing. That, that was weird because I was like, um, yeah, because your mouth is. Right. Uh, <laughs> he's just priming for later yeah, activities yeah. <laughs> but yeah so so um yeah so i i just write them down as they come to my head i write them down and uh and then when they pop back up in like my facebook memories or um somebody reminds me of a, a joke i told years ago mm -hmm. i'll go oh shit i should write that down i write it down and that's how I got through Jerry's classes because I had a notebook full oh, of those, those, one those one liners. I use like keep notes from Google. I have like, but I learned a long time ago, the one liners are a bad idea. I actually have to put like the whole context of what it was because I'll go back and I'll be like, what in the world was I talking about when I was talking about yeah. shrubbery? Right, right. You know? <laughs> it's like, but you, you're like a story. I do. Teller. I do tell stories. You're a storyteller and I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I mean, the, the extent of my stories is like if I have three one-liners in a row that all are about the same thing. That's my story. But see, my stuff actually on some level has happened to me and I just then blow it up. Right, right. And some of it I don't even have to blow up because it's so fucked up anyway that the story itself is... Like like the, the finger in the butt thing. Yes, right. I, I wrote I don't that know because what that's it really about, happened. But, all right. So we have a couple of questions here. Uh, see, is it your full-time job? Do you write no, music? um, actually, um, people said, I want to be a musician and a comedian <laughs> for a living. How do you do that? And I said, well, what I did was mm -hmm. I worked 33 years at a good union job. Okay. That and will then they it. told me you can have a pension now. And so I thought, oh, cool. I can afford to be a musician and a comedian. There you go. <laughs> See, so even I'm not a comedian full time. I mean, I do graphics. You, you've got to pay the bills. Right, you got to pay the bills. And, and I'm sorry, but artists, unless you're hitting the Netflix and the HBO and the Comedy Central, you ain't fucking making no money. Right. And even you're then, it's not. not even a guarantee. Right, and even YouTube, like they took away anybody that had a chance at getting it, like fifty dollars a year. They took that away. You got to have a thousand followers, mm -hmm. and you got to have so many hits. Right, and and then they. Or, Thank you, Facebook. By the way, yeah, I I, I actually. <laughs> I, I got to talk to them. Well, at least somebody on their behalf, but they paid me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, all right. Do you, do you, do you do a less dry Stephen Wright stuff? Yeah. Stephen Wright is like one of my heroes. Yeah. Pop up here. Oh my God. You'll never guess who just walked in the door. You guys, you know who this is. 
Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes, we he's, met. The, he's the rainbow condom dude. Everybody knows. Rainbow this. condom. I got out of the shower for this. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> What's going on? You are. You just got. Well, you walked into the live podcast. Oh, okay. Yeah. Grant. Grant got stuck in in traffic, and we were talking about fingers and butts. And oh, is Grant coming to this? Um. This... Well, I don't think he's going to make it because we're going to be ending this in you know just a few minutes. Yeah. Well, oh, at, at sixty minutes. So. Oh. Fuck. So uh, you can you can step in if you'd like as a, a special co-host. Uh, sure, it's special. It, you, you gotta put the graphic up that says joining party or something. Oh, you don't do that? No. Okay, we're just gonna. Oh, well, that's more time. There we go. So, I can skip back over here because he's got his fingers <laughs> put away now. But anyway, yeah. do you know who this lovely gentleman is? Uh, I can't remember your name, but you had a wa- lot of one-liners very similar to. Oh. Chris very similar Wolf. to who? Uh, very similar, yeah. Uh, very similar to Mitch Hedberg. Yes, <laughs> thank you. What? Is, <laughs> my you're, you're, wait a minute. Who? Jacob. Jacob Rubel. What do you say? He says you're. That's what he said. Jacob Rubel says that I'm Mitch Hedberg's dad. Yes. Which I don't think I've met her, his mom, but Med, maybe Med, I did. I think Mitch Hedberg is around your age, isn't he? Yeah, he's probably around. <laughs> that's, my age. Jacob. That's God, not how. Well, if he started, was alive. If he was alive. Mitch is gone. Yeah. yeah. Well, what'd you kill him for? Oh, wait, you wanted to. The OD. The OD. Yeah. Well, wow. He ago. really just wanted to take his He fight. used to we do know. drugs. He still does. He still does, but he used but to. But he used too. to, too. That's right. <laughs> what is He's, That's a Mitch Hedberg joke. Yeah. Okay. Here's, here's another one. I saw a wino on the sidewalk eating grapes. I was like, dude, you have to wait. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. Uh, so we, we were getting ready to get. I was getting serenaded. Can uh, I? Can yeah, I, I did hear, a few songs. Yeah. Can oh, I yeah, get you to do just too. one more song? One more song. Oh. So did you have these made when you started doing comedy? Or no? Oh I, my that's my music. We, we got to help him out here because you guys just bend the corner and pops right. Oh, yeah. I couldn't find the little bendy thing because normally. There, yeah, I, I didn't. I didn't spring for the the crack and peel. So. This is <laughs> this is coming from a man who wears the rainbow condom suit. <laughs> There you go. Oh, there you go. I'm just gonna have to steal another one. So, what? Come on, I know you've got lots. Well, the way I see the world, there's two kinds of people out there. There's dog people and there's cat people. Myself, I'm a dog person. I'm a cat person. I'm no. not real fond of cats. I, I, like cats. I mean, I'm I can never. I'm a cool animal. cat. I can You're, never. You managed at my house. I could never finish yeah. a whole one. <laughs> That's a joke. I'm Jackie. really glad he didn't come to my house because. I would have gotten my gang of, you know, that's a, that's a shout out. That's to him. a joke, Jackie. Look at me. I could finish a whole cat. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep, gonna totally call those bitch dude. Harry Bear. <laughs> we're, we're promoting Harry Bear. Oh, sweet. To pets. So did uh. <laughs> to pets. So did. I'm very confused. I just walked in, by the way. Yeah, this is great. So. So Grant just said, you just asked Grant, can I do my podcast here? No, he was actually supposed to be on it. He was in Carmel. Got uh, stuck in rain and traffic all the way on the Oh, wow. Side. Coming from Carmel. Yeah, that's I almost got yeah, stuck in traffic. My, uh, I was at a wedding uh, yesterday, and my car broke down. So we had to pick it up again today. And I almost got stuck in traffic again. So it's a, it's a fucking nightmare out there. All right. It's not Still come out because the Harry Bears and the Three Shot Jameson. My, thank you. My cats are dope. They like take over the podcast. I like, can't wait like, to try one. <laughs> I, heard, I heard lemon pepper is really good. Guess what, guess what? Him and my friend Lucy are going to have a very nice, intimate conversation later. Well. <laughs> <laughs> the doctor primed him up. He's ready to roll. <laughs> okay. Like, what I'm, gonna, I'm gonna have to watch this all the way through. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you should. You should. It's, it's actually Give a little good. context. <laughs> We're gonna oh, get started. Do you want me to do a song? Yeah. Really? Yes. Yeah, really. All right. So this song about my dog. Okay. I couldn't afford invisible fence. An invisible dog, it seemed to make more sense. I named him Spotless, cause he was so clean. Greatest dog that you have never seen. Got invisible papers from the IKC. 
invisible kennel club said he's a pedigree. Well, he can do tricks. He comes when I call. And you're never gonna see him lick his visible ball. <laughs> My visible dog, he don't bark and he don't bite. You don't need to go out for a walk in the middle of the night. He's always gonna be there to the end. My invisible dog is my best friend. Sometimes he sleeps out of my front stoop. You know where this is going, don't you? He never gotta worry about stepping in the visible poop. Now you might wonder just where he's at. Usually out chasing Jackie's visible cat. <laughs> My visible dog, he don't bark, he don't bite. You don't need to go out for a walk in the middle of the night. He's always gonna be there to the end. My invisible dog is my best friend. One day you went out play in the yard <laughs> he got run over by an invisible car <laughs> and I won't <laughs> fetch he just lies there instead and never gonna see how well he plays dead <laughs> my visible dog he never barked and he never bit he was greatest dog until he got hit but he was always there until the very end. My invisible dog is my best friend. My invisible dog is my best friend. I just want to point out, I have a question <laughs> that has been repeatedly passed on. On if you could kill somebody's animal. Whose would you pick? I'm killing his invisible dog with my invisible <laughs> shotgun. <laughs> All right. So well, people always ask me, why does the dog have to die at the end of the song? And I'm like, isn't the bigger question, why is my best friend an invisible dog? It goes along with his invisible <laughs> mistress. You, you've already like invested our time into it. We empathize with the dog and you fucking killed it. I know, I know right? Yeah. It was probably his invisible car. Uh, yeah. Insurance money. <laughs> it was. You're right. Those classic dog insurance scams. <laughs> Fucking liberals. <laughs> okay. Well, as you know, we are at Bears, and we are getting ready. Right, oh, we we hey, got Lauren, the pretty. Come up here. Uh, We're almost <laughs> Lauren, done. But hey, Lauren pop is so in pretty. Hi, Lauren, Lauren is actually but you're pretty. Our server, right? You Lauren, are a server. Lauren has been so our server tonight. Say. Oh, oh! She's like, I am not your servant. She was our server. But we are at Bear's place, and they will be if having. Come here, tip Lauren, very big. Very big, because we've harassed her very yes. much, and made her start working much earlier than she needed to. That's true. And they want to know why you look like Alf all of a sudden. Oh, uh, I needed to grow my beard out for that wedding I went to. Why yeah. was it an Amish wedding? Um, yes. Oh, I was trying to make no, a joke, and that's only totally bad. It was the opposite of an Amish wedding. It was a uh, black wedding, and but that, you were hiding the fact you were white. No, well, <laughs> it's very obvious. But no, it was a, uh, uh, it, it was a lot of fun. It was very, it was very. I got called out for everything. Everything at I a shook, wedding. I shook hands wrong. Uh, I ate chicken could... wrong, apparently. Really? And, um, yeah, it was it was just very much like, they immediately knew who I was because of Facebook. Okay, first of all, you're supposed to kill the chicken before you eat it. Oh, that's... And cool. cook it. Oh. Uh, I mean, we're, no, we're not... how I was eating here. it was like, I was taking it apart. Wait, no, I that was it apart. Ozzy. Ozzy. They were like, fucking white people don't know how to eat chicken. And I was like, what? Oh, that's a white people thing. I mean, I, I know so. how to eat chicken. That's not them a up. white people thing. People just like, I don't know, like in Get Out, there's like, have you seen Get Out? Mm -mm. There's like this I scene did, yeah. where like there's this girl I'm going to see it. Eating, Levi, let's have a date. Get Out. Um, eating cereal 
Except she has like a glass of milk and a bowl of cereal and she eats some of the cereal and then drinks the milk. Some of the, wait, so there's still cereal? Yeah, there's still, no, like there's a bowl of cereal. She does the mixing in her mouth. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Which, um. Okay, some, she blonde? No, oh. it's, it's just, it's just like, I don't know. It just feels like a, feels like a weird thing that, that someone's trying to make people think that white suburban people do. And it's like, I don't, I don't know. Uh, I'm not a white suburban person. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> because those are the kinds of guys that'll t tie me what? up and take me away. Yeah. They'll, they'll sell me this sex slave. Sure. That'd be great. No, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Okay. So we are at our last 10 to 20 seconds. So I'm going to tell you, we are at Bears. There's an open mic. If you need something to do, there's also tonight Joker, Shoe Fly. And I'm not really going to plug all the open mics. If you don't know them after watching my show, look on my page. Anyway, I'm really glad every... Oh, yep. And you're right. The Graduate is definitely, I guess, now added to that list. Because me and El Levi, Elmore, have like this long date of watching all of these movies I have never saw. Oh. Well, we so. just saw Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. And you should go see that, too, with Levi. It's a oh, Quentin Tarantino movie. Oh, um, see, now I love Quentin Tarantino movies. And we're going to end way. it on that. And we're going to say peace out and say thank you for Al checking us out. And you guys tune in next week.